Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to write our first aspect code. So in the previous tutorial, we created this Spring AOP project in which we included the Spring library and the Aspect J library. In order to find out what are the dependencies for the Spring library, check out the setting up Spring tutorial. And in order to check the dependencies of the Aspect J library, check out the uh, setting up AOP tutorial. So if you have these two uh, libraries included in your project, you're all set to start writing AOP. So let me first create a simple project, which will be the basis on which we will start writing aspects. Uh, the use case that I have in mind is, uh, you know, uh, a business service. Let's use the shape example that we've been using so far. So I want to create a shape service, which will have methods to retrieve some shape objects, be it a circle or a triangle or any other shape. And uh, I'll have a class with the main method that will get an instance of this business service using spring dependency injection. And uh, it will, you know, call the method in order to get the actual object. So first let me create a class which will have this main method. And uh, I'll call this as AOP main. I'll include the main method. Okay, so here I will be instantiating the Spring uh, application context. So let me create this Spring XML. Again, I'll call this spring dot XML. Click on the source tab. The file is obviously empty, so we need to fill in the required XML structure. And uh, once we've done that, we can add the bean definitions later. So if you remember, we have a few namespaces that uh, tell us what are the you know what what are the tags that we need to use. So uh, what we did in the earlier tutorial was we took one of the XML files that came with the Spring distribution. So we're gonna do the same thing uh, in this tutorial as well so that it saves some uh, typing. So let me open up the projects folder. Okay, so I have my Spring framework distribution over here. So you'll notice there's a projects folder. So open that. Here you have a lot of sample content and you have a lot of sample Spring XML files that we can use. But what I suggest you do is search for a particular tag and uh, search for files which have this tag as content. So the tag here is aspectj hyphen autoproxy. We'll uh, look at what this tag is in a minute, but what we're doing here is we are searching for files which contain this particular text, aspectj hyphen autoproxy. And of course we are looking at XML files, so pick any of the XML files that you see here. I see a simple config tests.xml. Uh, let's see what this contains. Yes, this is a Spring XML. It contains the tag AOP colon aspect J hyphen auto proxy. So this, this file will do. I will open this and uh, what I'll do first is I'll copy the header, you know, the beans tag. And of course I'll include this aspect J auto proxy as well. Let me copy this whole thing and I'll paste it in the Spring XML. So essentially what we're doing is we're copying this this header, beans header. Of course, this is this is pretty simple. You can type this in yourself. Um, context annotation configuration. Let's remove this for now. Let's remove them both for now. So essentially you're just copying the, the beans header tag. And uh, let's close the beans tag. And now we have our basic Spring XML template. I'll uh, quickly tell you the reason why we did this, the reason why we uh, searched for that particular tag. Uh, the reason we did, did that is for aspect-oriented programming, we need to write some tags which use the AOP namespace. Uh, what I mean by AOP namespace is the tags will be something like AOP colon something else. So in order to use this kind of AOP namespace, we need to have that namespace included in the bean stag. So you see here, you have the uh, namespace declaration for AOP. And uh, you see we have the schema location added 
as well. So this is what we needed for this tutorial because we're going to be writing AOP code. So if you pick this uh, beans definition tag from some other XML in which AOP is not really used, you might not have this particular namespace in the beans tag. So that's the reason why we looked at XMLs which have a specific AOP tag so that we know for sure that for that XML you would have the namespace defined in the beans tag. So that's that's a good uh, XML to copy this tag from. So now we have uh, the Spring XML with the AOP namespace. So we are all set to write our first beans. So in my uh, AOP main, let me first initiate the, the Spring application context. So I'll say application context CTX equals new. I'll say the class path XML application context. So this is the one. And I just need to pass the spring dot XML. This is the XML name. Now I'll import this context. So we have our application context on which we can uh, call our get bean methods. So now what I'll do is I'll create a service class which is the shape service and I'll create a couple of shape objects. New class so this will be the service class. I'll include it in a package service. I'll call this Shape service. Finish. Now I'll also create a couple of shape objects. I'll create a circle and I'll put it inside a package model because these are actually model or DTO classes. So I'll create a circle and I'll also create a triangle. Okay, so in my circle or triangle, I, uh, I don't want to add a lot of member variables for now. I'll just use one member variable, which is uh, the name. So the name of the circle or the name of the triangle. So I'll have a private string name and I'll generate the getters and setters. Okay. Now I have this, I'll use the same thing for the circle as well. Okay, so let's save these two. Now in my shape service, for now, let's not use any interfaces. To keep things simple, I'll have private circle and a private triangle. So I import them both. And I'll generate the getters and setters. Okay, so now I have a shape service that returns either a circle or triangle depending on the method that we call. I have a get triangle which will return a triangle and I have a get circle which will return a circle. So now let's configure these beans inside the spring XML. So first I'll define the two model tags. So one tag for the uh, triangle And uh, let me set the property name 
value as triangle name. So this is uh, a simple triangle bean definition. I'm just initializing a bean of the class triangle with the name triangle and then I have set the name member variable to triangle name. So I'll use something similar for the circle as well. So this will be circle. This is again the circle class. And then the value of the name initialized as circle name. So now I have these two model beans. Now I'll initiate the, the service bean. So when I copy this, So I'll call this the shape service and the class that it actually refers to is service dot shape service. Now since I have uh, both triangle and circle as uh, member variables, so I'll apply a quick shortcut. I'll do the auto wire by name so that I don't have to type uh, the whole dependency because actually I need to wire the triangle to the triangle member variable of the service and the circle to the circle member variable of the service. So since the names happen to match, I'll just use the auto wire by name. Okay, so now we are done with the spring XML. Let's save this. So here all I need to do is I need to get the shape service by using the get bean. So I'll say shape service equals ctx dot get bean of shape service. Of course, I'll have to cast this. Uh, one thing we can do is, well, first let me import shape service. So now, uh, context.getBean gives me an object which I need to cast to the object that I need to place it in. Uh, there is one more way we can do this. The getBean method has another signature which takes in two arguments. One is the name of the bean. The second thing is the class itself. So if I say shape service dot class, what I'm telling Spring is, hey, get me this bean, but then this bean is of this particular class so don't ask me to cast it you cast it yourself and get me the bean of this particular class so if we call this but this uh, method signature of the get bean which is the bean name as well as the class itself uh, the get bean method automatically takes care of casting it for us so we don't have to add an extra cast over here okay so now i have the shape service now i'll use the shape service to get, uh, let's say, a circle's name. So I'll print this out. I'll print the shape service dot get circle dot get name. So it should print out circle name. So I'll save and run this. So here you see circle name is printed. So now this is this is core spring. Okay, we have done dependency injection and uh, we have set up uh, a lookup with the get bean and spring is returning this bean. So now we will start writing an aspect and we will tap into this uh, execution flow, which is, you know, the shape service calling the circles uh, member variable value and printing this out. So we'll use this execution flow to write our own aspect. And the aspect that we have in mind is a simple logging aspect. So we want a logging message to be displayed whenever, let's say, let's take the circle. Okay, so whenever the get name of the circle object is called, we need to print a message into the system console. Now, how do we do that? We'll do that using an aspect.